I'll be going over um, Jamf Team Viewer integration, and this is going to be presented as if you already had Team Viewer and Jamf in use in your environment. Um, so introduced in Jamf Pro version 1031 uh, was Team Viewer integration directly into the Jamf Pro dashboard. I will be uh, demoing the configuration and deployment of TeamViewer with Jamf uh, per Jamf's administration guide, which is up on the screen right now. Uh, the link is at the bottom of the slide and a quick Google search for Jamf TeamViewer integration uh, will bring you to this page. Uh, with that being said, I will be following this guide almost to a T uh, and I'll be adding my own personal recommendations at each step as well. Uh, this is just you know, a basic guide and obviously with Jamf and management, we, we can skin this cat a thousand different ways, but I'm gonna be following this guide and then recommending stuff along the way. So uh, this is the integration overview of each step we're covering today. Uh, housekeeping, app association, privacy preferences, policy control, config profiles, uh, the team viewer packaging and deployment, and a remote session demo. Um, I'm gonna go through each process step-by-step -step with a recording. Uh, as if we were doing this live too for everyone's sake. Let me get this off my window though. So um, for housekeeping, uh, you gotta have a team viewer, corporate or enterprise level subscription and uh, nothing less will work per team viewer uh, statement. You gotta have Jamf Pro, not Jamf Now or now plus. Um, I also recommend uh, you actually install TeamViewer on your uh, administrative machine that you'll be remoting from to the end user's machine and uh, port accessibility. So the primary port TeamViewer uses is 5938. If your uh, security team or firewall team won't let that through, uh, the secondary failover port is 443. And they have a tertiary failover port, which is port 80. Not recommended, um, there's some caveats. It's slower and you don't get a feature that allows you to auto reconnect if your session is disconnected temporarily. So the first thing we need to do here is associate TeamViewer and Jamf. Um, in order to do this, we'll navigate to the TeamViewer and Jamf Pro dashboards. So we're gonna start off here in the TeamViewer management console. They make it super easy to do this. You just click on your user account you go ahead to edit profile and it gives you a new menu option for uh, the application. So you're going to click on that application and you're going to have to create a script token. This is what we use to associate the team viewer dashboard with Jamf. Uh, you give yourself or your app a name, an optional description. And then um, we're going to grant ourselves session management permissions. So you just gotta give yourself uh, three permissions, view all sessions, edit all sessions, and create sessions. Once that's completed, uh, you go ahead and create it and you open up your new little uh, script token app. You copy that token. And now we're gonna head over to the Jamf Pro dashboard. So once you navigate to your Jamf Pro dashboard with that script token copied, navigate to settings and the remote administration option is under global management. So you'll go ahead and select remote administration. And now we're gonna create a new configuration. Once you click new, uh, the only provider available right now is TeamViewer. So it's automatically selected for you. Go ahead and click next. Give your configuration a display name. This is where we copy in uh, the script token. And this is where we set uh, your enterprise's maximum session time. It can go up to 1,440 minutes, which is 24 hours. For this demo's sake, I'm just throwing it in, uh, throwing an hour in there. And that's it. We verified that our Jamf Pro dashboard is associated with our Team Viewer dashboard, and uh, we can move on here. Uh, so now uh, the next step is to configure the privacy preferences policy control profile. I'm starting off um, in the configurations profile pane within your Jamf Pro dashboard under the Team Viewer integration uh, configuration profile. I pre configured in the privacy preferences policy control payload. 
in this payload, I already have everything configured uh, for ease of demonstration. I have the three applications that are provided by TeamViewer already populated in here. Uh, the first one is TeamViewer QS, and we have TeamViewer Full, and finally TeamViewer Host. So TeamViewer QS stands for TeamViewer Quick Support. Uh, TeamViewer Quick Support is optimized for instant remote desktop support. Uh, unattended access is not available via this method and it does not require the application to be installed on the end user's machine or administrator rights. Uh, it requires the end user to click a download link and for the admin to provide the session ID and a password to the end user. Now, what we'll be previewing today is the TeamViewer host application, uh, which is what we'll be deploying to the test machine I set up for this demo. Um, TeamViewer host, it allows for unattended 24 seven access to the end user's machine and requires the TeamViewer app to be installed locally on the machine already. Uh, and TeamViewer full here, this is what you would install on your machine as a, an administrator. And this is kind of set up in the event you wanted to manage your champ administrator machines. Uh, so this just pushes that config out so that the guys don't have to mess with their system preferences. Hey, quick question, Hugo. Yeah. Uh, is this all documented on that KB article that you showed before? Get ready for it. Right here is the Jamfro administrator guide. So this is oh, perfect. Uh, yep, the application, um, the applications and their identifier and code requirements are all available on that uh, Jamfro administrator guide. It's as simple as going here, uh, finding the app you want to deploy, copying over the identifier code requirements right into the configuration profile, save it, deploy it, um, and we're done, right? So now we have the configuration profile built. So now that we have TeamViewer associated and the configuration profile created and deployed, uh, the next step is to package and deploy uh, TeamViewer. So to start off, we're gonna go back to the TeamViewer dashboard. Uh, they give you a design and deploy menu option here to download the installer. Uh, now the installer is downloaded to your computer locally, downloaded as a zip. So what we're gonna do is open up that zip and check out the contents. And it has both the full for the admin machine and the host for the end user machine. We're gonna be using the host package in this instance to deploy. Uh, the next step is you wanna set up your path for deployment on the end user's machine. Now, the Jamf Pro administrator guide states to deploy this to the end user's home directory. I'm not doing that um, and I, disagree with that, I think you should deploy and stage your packages somewhere else on the end user's computer, like library application support, organization name, and even flag that directory as hidden. Uh, but for the sake of this demo, I'm just showing you how Jamf has us doing it. So the next step is once we have the team viewer package in the file is to create a plist. This plist is also provided by Jamf in that KB article. Simply copy it. Um, I used BB edit. I pasted it in the BB edit. I saved it and, it, and I saved it as choices.xml, which is uh, the native name of the file that Jamf provides. Now, another recommendation I have for this is you don't have to do it this way. Um, I personally would write this out, uh, write this plist out by a script that lives in Jamf. So if you ever needed to change this plist in the future, you would just create a script that runs, writes this out. Uh, that way you don't have to create a new package and redeploy TeamViewer to the newer machines. It's a lot cleaner process. I personally believe that's best practice. Um, but I digress. Now we've got TeamViewer and the choices plist in the directory we want. So I'm gonna open up Composer here. I'm gonna place the TeamViewer directory into the source file that we're gonna to deploy to the end user's machine. I'm gonna build it out as a disk image and I'm gonna save the disk image locally to the desktop. 
Once the disk image is saved locally to my desktop, I go ahead and I upload it uh, to the Jamfro repository or distribution point. So it is now accessible in the Jamfro dashboard uh, when we go to create our policy. So the second step to the deployment process is an installation script that they also provide right here. Simply copy it, paste it into your Jamf Pro dashboard into a script and save that script. So you'll see here that I made changes uh, and I'm targeting the directory, the user's shared team viewer that I'm deploying everything to, targeting the plist and the package so that uh, changes are applied from that plist to the package during its installation. And now we'll navigate over to uh, building out the policy. Again, this is how Jamf recommends doing it with a team viewer disk image and to fill existing users home directory in the event that you actually put your team viewer deployment package and the XML for the plist into the home user or the end users home directory. Again, optional. Uh, you could deploy it elsewhere via a package, not a disk image. Then you don't have to select a foot through option and um, you can skip this step. But this is again, explicitly following Jamf's instructions. So now that I've verified we have our disk image, the foo option is selected and our scripts priority is set to after, we're good to go. Another side note in here, if you were writing out the plist, via a script, this would run in this policy before the deployment and before the installation of the, uh, the team viewer installation script. And so that's it for the deployment process. Everything's pretty straightforward if you guys are uh, well vetted uh, Jamf admins as well. And um, where are we going? Now that I have the Jamf team viewer, associated configuration profile created and deployed and the application deployed and installed on the end user's machine via that policy we created. Um, I'll be demonstrating the remote session experience from both the administrator and the end user uh, perspective simultaneously here. So we're gonna start out on the Jamf Pro administrator's machine and the Jamf Pro dashboard under the end user's Macintosh is uh, inventory record. And when you start here, all you got to do is go to the management tab, uh, select remote administration at the bottom, right? Because we set up TeamViewer already. Throw a reason in for the session in there for a log's sake and start the session. Now, once you start the session, we're going to send a self service notification to the end user's Mac. And I believe this is the greatest part of this. So now we're on the end user's computer. Nothing is open, self-service isn't open. Uh, we just sent that command from the administrator's Mac and boom, right here comes in a self-service notification. All the end user has to do, it double click that notification, opens up self-service and allows that end user to open the remote session you just initiated. While this is happening on the end or the end user's Mac, on your administrator Mac, you're clicking that link and you're starting up Team Viewer, which you installed on your machine locally. Um, now you're beginning this remote session. We're waiting for that end user now to click open. They're gonna click open on the end user's Mac. This also is from the perspective of the end user's first time. So they're gonna get a few uh, requests here. So do you want this page to open Team Viewer, right? The end user is gonna click allow. And then following this option, if the end user is an administrator, they have to click allow again. Otherwise the configuration profile for standard users automatically allows this remote control option. So now that you've clicked allowed on the end user's Mac, the remote session also began on your management Mac. So now we're gonna jump back from the end user's Mac to the administrator's Mac and you're gonna see this happen from your perspective. They just clicked open and self-service and now you have access to their computer while they go through those options. And it's that easy. Um, now over the internet from the Jamf Pro dashboard natively, we can remotely view end users max. Um, I believe this is a super awesome integration. I in the past have used TeamViewer and Jamf separately. It was a little bit of a nightmare making sure that 
the Mac you see in Team Viewer's dashboard is the same Mac of the end user in your Jamf Pro dashboard that you want to access. Sometimes we would remote control the wrong person's computer. Uh, this really cleans that mess up. Um, and uh, for local remote viewing, I still recommend using the command K go to serve or connect to server option to VNC into an end user's computer or even using ARD.